Right, welcome to this index review for Blood Angels we're going to be covering in this video here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to run through each of the units. Now I'm going to be fascinated by this one because I have Blood Angels um, and the way 8th edition seems to be playing at the moment, I think a lot of my armies are going to be changing quite significantly. So uh, it'll be fascinating to see what units. I have a variety of units of Blood Angels already, some I haven't used in quite a while. Uh, we'll take a look here and see if they're more viable now, uh, now that 8th edition and this index has come along. So uh, that's what we plan to do. Uh, just to mention, I've got my uh, index book here from GamingFigures.com. Uh, they do Games Workshop uh, at a discounted rate. Uh, you can check out their website. Uh, they offer free postage in the UK if your order comes to over £40. Pounds, uh, it's 15% off uh, and then an extra 5% off if your order comes over £100. Pounds. So all that helps, it just means that you can get your uh, Warhammer 40,000, your Games Workshop stuff at a discounted rate. They do other gaming systems as well, um, so you can check them out. That's gamingfigures.com. So we'll turn uh, Blood Angels up here. Now there is the, the Space Marines, the main Space Marine. Uh, entries come up first and then uh, Blood Angels come after that. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm, in this video I'm going to cover specific units for the Blood Angels. Now the Blood Angels can use regular Space Marine units like Rhinos and Land Raiders and so on. I'll cover that in the regular Space Marine uh, review just to see what I, I think of those uh, different unit types. But just in this video specific Blood Angels uh, unit types that we cover. So here they are. The first thing to cover them is they have, and they should have no fear like regular Space Marines, uh, you can reroll failed morale tests for this unit. So you roll the dice to see if you lose any casualties, uh, if you need to check for morale. Uh, if you get a bad result, you can reroll it. It's pretty helpful, it's pretty good for morale. And we've played a good number of 8th edition games now. It seems that morale isn't too much of a big issue. Small units don't seem to be affected too much. Uh, and we, we found in games it was quite rare that uh, you would suffer casualties as a result of a bad morale result. And then with that reroll, it just makes them very reliable. Uh, so, Black Rage. You can add one to units' attacks characteristics in the fight phase if it charged in the preceding charge phase. So you get plus one attack on a charge if you have Black Rage, which is pretty good roll. Pretty good roll. In addition, roll d6 each time this unit loses a wound. On a six, the damage is ignored. Nice. So, pretty good. We'll see what units have that Black Rage roll, but uh, that's pretty good on that. Jump Pack Assault during deployment. If this model has a Jump Pack, you can set it up high in the skies instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, this model can Assault from above. Set it up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. So, it's quite hard to get a charge off if you're over 9 inches away. You need a good roll, uh, but quite handy for you know shooting ability. Uh, and then uh, landing in a good strategic place. There's no scatter anymore, so the ability to do that with jump packs is quite helpful. So then, yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier on. Uh, the following Space Marine data sheets can be found, can be from the Blood Angels chapter. Uh, so you've got all of these here, things like Rhino, Rhino Primaris. Um, I'd call them out to see what you can get uh, for Blood Angels. You can get regular Assault Squad, Attack Bike, Bike Squad, Captain, Captain Gravis armor, Captain Terminator armor, Captain on a bike, Chaplain, Chaplain Terminator armor, Chaplain on a bike, Company Ancient, Company Champion, Company Veterans, Devastator Squad, Dreadnought, Drop Pod, Hellblaster Squad is available for them, Imperial Space Marines available for them, Inceptor Squads, Intercessor Squads, so it looks like Blood Angels got full access to them, uh, Land Raider, Land Raider Crusader, Excelsior, Redeemer, Land Speeders, Librarian, Librarian Terminator, Armor, Librarian on the Bike, Predator. Okay, Predator's there, it's interesting because I have one of them. Uh, Primaris Ancient, Primaris Lieutenants, Razorback Rhino, Rhino Primaris, Sanguinary Novitiate, use the Apocryphary Data Sheet, Scout Bike Squad, Scout Squad Servitors, Stern Guard, they're in Storm Raven Gunship, so they're Tactical Squad, Tech Marine, Tech Marine on the Bike, Terminator Assault Squad, Terminator Squad, Vanguard Veteran Squad, Vindicator, and Whirlwind. So that's that. Uh, okay, this is, we'll come back to this one when we come to the, well no, if you've got Librarian, we'll do this now, uh, because we won't be covering the regular Librarian entry here in this video. So, 
so these are the options here for psychic powers. It's been trimmed down a lot for 8th edition. There's just three of them available. So the first one is Blood Boil. Blood Boil is a warp charge value of 5, so it's quite easy to get this one to go off. If manifested, select a visible enemy unit within 18 of the psychic and roll 3 dice. Target suffers a mortal wound for each result that equals or exceeds its toughness characteristic. So it's against Chaos Space Marines, you, it's tough as four, you fours or more, they suffer a mortal wound. So similar to Smite in a way, Blood Boil, so it's not bad. Next, next one is uh, Shield of Sanguinius. Shield of Sanguinius has a walk charge value of six. If manifested, select a friendly blood engine unit within 12 of the Psyker. Till the start of your next Psychic phase, the unit is a four plus in one. Nice, that's good. That's pretty helpful. That's a good power, that one. Uh, unleash, because that's a unit, isn't it? No, yeah, so you give it to a, give it to a vehicle, give it to a dreadnought. Yeah, so pretty cool. Okay, unleash, and it's a uh, value of six, it's qu quite straightforward. Yeah, yeah, that's a good value as well to try and get that one to go off. Unleash Rage is the next one. There's a warp charge value of 6. Again, if manifested, select a friendly Blood Angels unit within 12 inches of the Psyker. To the start of your next Psychic phase, the unit has plus 1 attack. Again, pretty good bonus there. So they're not bad, those. Sanguinary Discipline. Not too bad at all. My favourite would be Shield of Sanguinius. It's helpful. And the Unleash Rage as well. Uh, many units will be find on the following pages reference one of the Wargear lists. When this is the case, the unit may take any item from the appropriate list on page 11 with the following amendments. Blood Angels favour different weapons to other Space Marine chapters. Add the following weapons to the pistols and sergeant equipment. So, Inferno Pistol and Hand Flamer. And then they can also take uh, Heavy Flamer for the Heavy Weapons list. Yep. Okay, so that's that. So... Again, we're going to go. On, we're doing uh, specific Blood Angels uh, unique units, and they're the ones I usually like to take for Blood Angels. I try to. Um, the, the units are very nice, nicely sculpted models, very bright and colourful. Things like Sanguinary Guard, Death Company, really iconic Blood Angels units. So I try to incorporate those um, into my Blood Angels army. Uh, hope to do the same with this new list uh, that I'm working on uh, at the moment. But we'll, we'll start here with Commander Dante. So he is, I need to look up the points you're going to pay for him as well. He's a power value of 11, so he's going to be pretty expensive, but he is uh, the chapter master. So just turn him up here. Trains, Blood Angels. Commander Dante, it's 200, <laughs> 215 points. Now this does include, it says here including war gears, there's a flat 215, you don't pay out any more. So his movement's 12, he's obviously got the jump pack, weapon skill and ballistic skill 2+, plus. so extremely reliable. Strength 4, toughness 4, he's got 6 wounds now, 6 attacks, that's an excellent base value for attacks. Leadership 9, a 2 plus save. Uh, he comes with the Axe Mortalis, an Inferno pistol, frag and crack grenades, only one of this model per army. So Inferno Pistol, then we'll cover that now. Range 6, Pistol 1, Strength 8, AP minus 4, and D6 damage. So extremely reliable. You're usually going to be on 2s to hit, and then usually against vehicles, 3s um, to wound. And then AP minus 4, you're going to scrub most armour there on vehicles, and then a straight D6. If you're in half range, you have to get in 3 inches for this. Uh, you can roll 2 dice, choose the best for your damage result. Next is the Axe Mortalis, so in combat here, uh, so it's a melee weapon, it's plus two strength, so that puts you on strength six, it's AP minus three, and it's D3 damage as well, so it's a nasty weapon. You can reroll foul wound rolls for this weapon if the target's a character, so if he's hunting <laughs> some other character, they're going to be in trouble, you get to reroll wounds. And that's pretty nasty because you're on twos to hit with six dice probably going to get five hits and then three plus or four plus to wound re-rolls if you're against a character so he is a character slayer for sure uh, frag and crack grenades just as usual 
for them, frag is range 6, uh, d6 shot, strength 3, no AP, and then damage 1, crack grenade, range 6, 1 shot, strength 6, AP minus 1, d3 points of damage. I do like the crack grenade, it's been pretty cool. Abilities, Nation of No Fear, that's the reroll from morale, his leadership's 9 anyway. Chapter Master, you can reroll failed to hit rolls for all friendly Blood Angels units uh, within, or Blood Angels within 6 of Commander Dante, so he's Gives out a decent, like a chaplain benefit for units that are near, nearby. He has the jump pack assault. Uh, so it's as we've read already, uh, just at the start. Death mask. Enemy units, it does come with a death mask. Um, well, it doesn't say it in the war gear, but it, it's entered here in abilities. Enemy units suffer a minus one modifier to their leadership value. Uh, while they're within three inches of any models wearing a death mask. I don't think that's much of a benefit at all. Really, I'm just going to lose one extra model if they foul the morale. It's nothing major, really. Um, Iron Halo does come with a 4 plus in fun save, so he is good. He is really good. 215 points is not too bad. So, not bowing. Dante is pretty cool. I mean,. If, if Games Workshop re-sculpted him, I know that I do like the, the older model, but if they made him bigger, nice ornate base for him to go on as well, and really did a nice job re-sculpting him, he'd, he would look fantastic. He really would look nice. So you've got Captain Tycho next, power rating of 5, so he's going to be a fair bit cheaper. It's just the one type of him. I believe now. Oh no, you do get Tycho the Lost, that's fine, so you do get both types. So uh, Captain Tycho is 95 points, very cheap actually. Movement 6, uh, weapon skill and ballistic skill 2 plus, strength for toughness 4, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, Legion 9 2 plus saves. Decent stat line, very cheap here. He's a single model, this includes war gear. Yeah, he's a single model armed with blood song, a bolt pistol, fragment crack grenades, only one Tycho per army. So, blood song. When attacking with this weapon, choose one or both of the profiles below. If you choose both, subtract one to hit rolls. So he's going to be on, even with that minus one to hit, it's going to be on freeze to hit anyway if you go for both of these profiles. So the first one's a master crafted bolt gun. Range 24, rapid fire 1, strength 4, AP minus 1, and then 2 damage. Pretty good. And then the melter gun. Yeah, so he'll keep this. It's not the old rules for combi where you fire it once you lose it he keeps this throughout the game it's range 12 assault 1 strength 8 AP minus 4 and D6 damage and if it's within half the range which is 6 inches you get 2 dice choose the best yes we're well armed hmm but no yeah but there's no uh, combat ability for him really here's the bolt pistol Frank crack grenades. They should have fear. Rights of battle. You can reroll hit rolls of one made for friendly blood angels units within six of Tycho. A ball of the beast. You may make D3 additional close combat attacks if he's within an inch of enemy any enemy orcs after he has piled in in the fight phase. And then Iron Halo, he has a four plus in one. Okay. So he's a bargain, but he's just not that amazing, I don't think. Yeah, it's difficult that. Uh, so Tycho the Lost next. He will cost 70 points, even cheaper. Very, very cheap HQ actually. Stat line is the same. Yeah, he comes with Blood Song, which again is exactly the same. I'm just looking. Right, so he comes with Black Rage actually so just the uh, deaf company version of him uh, and then the only difference here is he keep his yeah keeps his four plus in one keeps a bore the beast uh, but he doesn't get the rights of battle so that's very very cheap 70 points and you're getting a pretty good stat line for him so that's Tycho the loss not bad because you know, with Blood Angels found it in previous lists, you can end up spending a lot of points on elite units, and then uh, if you start taking the most expensive HQs, your army ends up being very small. So a small HQ like this, especially if you're trying to run a battalion um, and 
you want to get those two HQ slots filled up. You can take a, a, a more expensive HQ and a cheap one. Uh, Librarian Dreadnought is next. Power 10, so he's going to be expensive here. It's 150 points, does not include war gear. Uh, Furiosa Force Halberd, just capture these now. Force Halberd. Zero points, you don't pay for that. And then uh, Furious of Fist and Stormbolter. Furious of Fist, you're going to pay 40 points for that, so it puts on 190 points for this Dreadnought. And then a uh, Stormbolter as well, which will be uh, from the regular Space Marine list. I don't suppose it's going to be that much if anything at all, but that's what he costs, so about 190 points. So, uh, movement 6, 2 plus weapon skill, 3 plus ballistic skill, strength 6, toughest 7, 8 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, 3 plus save, uh, covered what he's armed with, storm bolter, heavy flamer, now is uh, range 8, it's heavy d6 shots, so it's quite unreliable, you know, you roll a 1, you just one shot, so, you know, I think... If, I think they were better in, in 7th where you, you had the whole template, if you if you were near a large unit you knew you were going to catch them with the template, it was more guaranteed, but with this you could have a big unit nearby, you could only get one dice, one, one hit through, quite unreliable, or you could do really well and roll a 6, but it's not that impressive anymore. Uh, strength 5, AP minus 1, and uh, damage 1, it's auto hits on the target, but I think Heavy Flames are taking a knock. Melter Gun, range 12. Assault 1, Strength 8, AP minus 4, D6 damage. Again, if you're in half range, you get 2 D6, choose the best. Uh, now, here we go, the Furioso Fist. It's times 2 Strength. I believe you can go over Strength 10 now. So that would put him on Strength 12. Uh, it's AP minus 3, and 3 points of damage. So that's nasty enough. Yep. And then the Furioso Force Hellbird is plus 4 Strength. Quite puts him on Strength 10. AP minus 4 and 3 points of damage, so two decent uh, close combat weapons just there. This model may replace a storm bolt with a heavy flamer or a melter gun. I probably would take the melter gun uh, on him. So he's pretty good in combat, and then you've got the benefit of being a psyker on top. Remember, you can grant out those abilities, some pretty good psychic powers actually. So he's all, an all in one here, you know, a close combat dreadnought plus the benefits of being a librarian as well. Uh, so Psychic Hood, you can add one to deny the witch tests you take for any models, for this model against enemy, enemy psychers of in 12. Uh, then Explodes, usual results for that. Smoke Launchers, you can use those. Uh, once per battle, instead of shooting any weapons, you can use Smoke Launchers. Uh, until your next shooting phase, your opponent must subtract one to hit rolls for ranged weapons against this vehicle, a bit of protection. Psychic, you can attempt to manifest two psychic powers in each friendly psychic phase. Attempt to deny one psychic power in the enemy psychic phase. It knows the smite power and two psychic powers from sanguinary discipline. That's really good. Yeah, no, that is really good. It's a librarian dreadnought. It's a decent, decent unit. He was in seventh and he's uh, fine. Really good here. Now he's got a low amount of attacks. He's got three attacks, but he's on two's tip. And with no, there's no uh, minuses here from wieldy kind of rules equivalents there, so he's twos to hit. You're going to hit uh, at least twice, usually three times in combat. I mean, your melee weapons, they are limited to free damage, not D6. So it would take you a while to stab your way for a vehicle, but still, uh, Librarian Dragnaut's pretty good. Okay. Right, next is uh, Mephiston. I actually do have this model, um, so uh, here's a possibility to use. So he will cost 145 points. It's not bad, actually. Not bad at all. Right, so movement 7 for him. It's quite quick. Weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength and toughness 5. 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9 and 2 plus save. Comes with Plaza Pistol, the Sanguine Sword, 
which will cover frame crack grenades and you're only allowed to take one of them so plasma pistol uh, we'll cover it here, it's uh, range 12, pistol 1, strength 7, AP minus 3 and 1 point damage. Uh, if you go for supercharge, you get strength 8, AP minus 3, 2 points damage. And if you're a 1, bear is slain. Oh dear. Dear, dear. That's not good for characters, you know. It's alright when it's on a, a single model, but roll a 1 and the bear is slain. Oh dear, you'd never let that happen during a game. If you did, you'd have to have a, st a stratagem on standby just to get that reroll. God, that's terrible. Right, next is the Sanguine Sword. It's a melee weapon, it's times two strength, so it puts him on strength 10, AP minus three, and then D3 points of damage. So yeah, he's pretty pretty brutal in combat. Four attacks there, it's not bad. Frag crack grenades. Right, so. They should know no fear. Lord of Death. Each time Chief Librarian Mephisto suffers a wound, or a mortal wound, roll a d6, or a 5 plus, the damage is ignored. Cool bit of durability there. Psychic Hood. Uh, you can cover that already. Uh, Psyker. Chief Librarian Mephisto can attempt to manifest two psychic powers in each friendly psychic phase. You can attempt to deny two psychic powers in the enemy psychic phase. He knows smite and three psychic powers. All of them. Brilliant. He's a brilliant Psyker. And, unlike other Psykers, uh, he packs a bit of a punch in combat as well. So, Fiston's an option. Yeah, well, looks like a lot of the uh, Blood Angels HQs are pretty good. I, I've been, to be honest, I am looking for a, a new HQ to use for my new Blood Angels list. So, this is fascinating here. Uh, the next two entries um, <laughs> might be interested in here, possibly to have these two uh, as well. So I've got, I have most of these actually. I have Dante, I don't have Tycho, but I have Dante, I've got my fist on, have Sanguinar, have Astraf as well. So you may well see one of these being used uh, in a new Blood Angels list. Hmm, interesting. Right, so the next one's the Sanguinar. And what's interesting that Sanguinar, in 7th edition, he had to float around separate. Uh, and he wasn't allowed to join a unit. Well now, that's the same for all the characters, so all of a sudden, I think Sanguine was quite viable here, but we'll see how much he is. He's nine power points. Come on, be less than 200. 170 points. Yeah. Okay. 170 points. Right, so movement 12. Weapon skill, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength for toughness 4, 5 wounds, 5 attacks. So he's, he's competing here with Dante, leadership 9, 2 plus save. He's a single model armed with an Encarmine broadsword, frag and crack grenades. So there's no shooting ability with him, only grenades. So the broadsword, it's plus 2 strength, so he's going to fight at strength 6, it's AP minus 4, and D3 points of damage. So he is pretty mean in close combat. Oh yeah, he is pretty good. Okay, they should no fear. Aura of Fervor, you can have plus one to the attacks characteristic of friendly Blood Angels infantry units within six of the Sanguinal. Okay, so a nice bonus there. Now, uh, I've been told, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the character benefits of the bonuses that he offers to other units. So if I get this right, he gets plus one attack as well. Could be wrong on that one. Correct, you know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But it means he would be on six attacks. Avenging Angel. The Sanguinal can charge even if he fell back in the preceding movement phase. Right, so he can leap in and out of combat and charge. Nice bit of flexibility of him there. He's not going to get bogged down. Death Mask. Uh, enemy units will not bogged down. What I mean is um, he's able to pull out and still be effective in charge. He's got a Death Mask. There's a four plus in one, and he has the Jump Back Assault. Yeah, Sanguinal's pretty good. Okay, another viable option here. They're all viable here. Dante's good. Yeah, Dante is good. The Fiston's pretty mean. We'd like a Psyker in my Blood Angels army, so that's an option just there. I think it's not so bad, 145. Okay, so I suppose it's a case of comparing him with a regular Space Marines librarian. Uh, so Astra, next. 
the power level 8, which is a little bit cheaper, is 143 points. Okay. Movement 12. Uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill, 2 plus. Strength and toughness, 4. 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership, and 2 plus save. He's got the executioner's axe. Uh, grenades, and you can only take one of them. So the executioner's axe, plus 1 strength. Mm, not that amazing. You'd think it would be more powerful than that, but only plus 1 strength here for the axe. It's a bit strange. Uh, it's only puts on strength 5. It's AP minus 3, which is okay. Add and then d3 points of damage. Yeah, the broadsword's better here. I think. Each time you roll a wound of a 6 plus, which is quite unlikely, but if you get it, uh, it causes free a, flat, a, strat, a straight 3 damage instead of d3. So it makes it a bit reliable, but it's quite hard to get that 6 uh, on your wounds. So Astraf's not quite so good. But he has Redeemer of the Lost. All friendly Blood Angels units within six can use his leadership instead of their own. In addition, friendly death company units automatically pass them around if they're within six. Okay, so quite unlikely they're gonna run anyway, but that's the bonus he offers. He has got jump back assault. Litanies of hate, you can reroll vows to hit rolls in the fight phase uh, for friendly blood angels units within six. Okay, so he's like a super chaplain here. Pretty good. And then Mass of Doom. Hmm, okay. At uh, once per battle, at the start of your movement phase, Astraf may chant the Mass of Doom. <laughs> Roll a d6. Each. For each friendly Blood Angels infantry unit in six, and apply the result. So, a result of a one. The unit suffers a mortal wound. Oh, great. <laughs> Two to five. Dark, rough. You can add one. I suppose you can re-roll this if you have a stratagem, just to bear that in mind. You can, re you can add one to hit rolls made for this unit in the f fight phase until the end of your turn. So all units of six could get plus one, I mean it'll be on like twos to hit. It's pretty nasty. Vessel of Sanguinis, you can add one to hit rolls made for this unit in the fight phase until the end of your turn. In addition, the unit has a four plus in month save. Okay. So, not bad. And then the unit has a four plus. Uh, sorry, the model. Uh, has a full plus in one save, has a Rosarius just there. So Astraf's alright. If you're looking for a cheaper version of of this or for Dante, then Astraf's the choice to take. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Oh yeah, Sangrain Priest, one of my favourite Blood Angels models. Beautiful model. Let's see what the rules for him are. Yeah, that's the great thing about Blood Angels. You've got some real nice you've got some access to some really nice uh, sculpted HQ choices, some unique ones to them. Um, so, that's some nice options to have. But this is a very really nice model plastic one uh, that Games Workshop released. Now, uh, movement six, weapon skill two plus, cool, that's pretty good. Uh, ballistic skill three plus, strength and toughness four, four wounds now for him, three attacks, it's okay. Uh, leadership nine and a three plus save. It's got a single. Uh, he's a single model armed with a bolt pistol, chain sword, frag and crack grenades. Okay. So, uh, he costs a sanguinary priest 69 points. He's quite expensive. Uh, you probably want to upgrade his war gear because he's not that great in close combat or shooting. So, this model may replace his bolt pistol with a bolt gun. Or an item from the pistols or combi weapons list. Okay, so you could give him a combi weapon. Cool. Uh, this model may replace his chainsaw with an item from the melee weapons list. Right, so you can start paying out for these upgrades here. Uh, and then this model may replace his bolt pistol with an item. Oh, look, this model may replace his chainsaw with an item from the melee weapons. And he can replace his bolt pistol with an item from the melee weapons. So you've got the option to take two. Uh, you can take a jump pack. If he does so, his movement is increased to 12, and he has jump pack and fly keywords. Okay. So yeah, you may want to give him, uh, like improve his melee weapon, depends how you plan to use him. Let's just see what the, bon the bonuses you get for him are. Nation of Fear, Blood Chalice. Friendly Blood Angels Infantry and Bike Units increase their strength by one, while serving six. So it's like a, a permanent furious charge. They're, they're always at plus one, you know, whether they charge or not, as long as you keep him within six. 
So that's helpful enough. Um, and then the Narfecium, at the end of any of your movement phases, the Sanguinary Priest can attempt to heal or revive a single model. Select a friendly Blood Angels infantry or biker within three inches of the Sanguinary Priest. If that unit contains a wounded model, it immediately gains D3 lost wounds. If the chosen unit contains no wounded models, but one or more of its models has been slain, roll D6 and a 4 plus, the slain model is returned to the unit with one wound remaining. Cool, so you can resurrect stuff now. Sanguinary Priest is quite hard to get four, well it's 50-50 at 4 plus, it's not too reliable. If a Sanguinary Priest fails to revive a model in this manner, he can do nothing else for the remainder of the turn. He can't shoot, charge, fight, etc. As he recovers the Gene Seed of the Fallen Warrior. The unit can only be target... Um, the unit can only be the target of the Narfakium ability once each turn. So... Yeah, he's okay. He's alright. Let's say he's amazing. You end up paying 69, 70 points, and you've got to pay for your uh, weapon on top of it. But, but having said that, you know, you could take that perhaps as a power sword. What is it now for a power sword? Not very much at all. He's quite cheap, actually. And uh, pretty good for healing ability there. I mean, helpful for, say, unit terminators. You resurrect one of them who's been killed, or one's on a wound. You're going to recover one of the wounds. Or if you've got him uh, with another character nearby, like Dante, for example, he can be busy uh, healing the wounds and so on. Yeah, so pretty good. It's infantry or biker, yeah, so that's who you can help. So Sanguine Priest then on a bike. Uh, it's 94 points. And you'll get f uh, the stat line changes now, move, movement 14. Uh, the same weapon skill, ballistic skill, toughness is increased to 5, wounds you get an extra 1, 5 wounds, uh, and that's about it. And that's all the same rules, so there's an option to put him uh, on a bike. Ah yes, Brother Kabulo. Again, one that they could easily re-sculpt and do a real nice job of doing, because this is an old, old model here. Uh, again, I do have this one. Um, do like him, but I just I wish they didn't redo the plastic. So Kabulo here is 94 points. Uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill, two plus, movement six, strength top is four, five points, four attacks for him. Leadership nine and three plus save. He, now he has Heaven's Teeth. They've kept that same weapon. So Heaven's Teeth is plus one strength and minus one on the AP. So, not bad. Not amazing though, really. Uh, he's got fast seeing eye. Once per turn, you can re-roll a single dice. Roll made for Brother Kabulo. Okay. Similar rolls, uh, really, to how he was in the previous edition. The Red Growl. Friendly Blood Angels infantry and bike units increase their strength by one. Also in six, that's the same. In addition, each time you make a hit roll of six in the fight phase, for friendly blood angels units within six of Kabulo, that unit may immediately make another close combat attack using the same weapons. These bonus attacks cannot themselves generate any additional close combat attacks. So if you bury him in amongst um, multiple units and he grants that ability, all of a sudden um, he's going to grant some a fair few extra attacks. You know, the more the more models nearby and fighting, the better. Okay, um, I'm just seeing if this is the same. No, the Narfakium is exactly the same. So he's equipped. Uh, he's just a souped up version of the Sanguinary Priest. I usually like to go for him. It's, it's cheaper and the model's more up to date, and it, in my opinion, nicer than the original uh, Brother Kabulo. Just here. So next is, now this isn't HQ, this is actually an elite choice. It's a Sanguinary Guard Ancient. So with the Sanguinary Guard, maybe the one that carries the banner, they've now separated him out and turned him into a Sanguinary Guard Ancient. Now he's got to float around, he can't join another unit, he's a single model that's going to float around, uh, preferably uh, nearby Sanguinary Guard units. But he is separate now. Um, sanguinary Guard Ancient is 84 points. Then you've got to pay for your banner and so on. 
don't think, I think the banner comes in included. Yeah, the banner I think is included in the points cost. Uh, the Encarmine Sword, let's just have a look here. Yeah. You do have to pay 13 points for him. So you're looking at about 100 points for this guy. Gosh, a fair bit of expense here. Uh, so movement 12, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3 plus, strength and toughness 4. You do get 4 wounds for him. He's on 3 attacks, leadership 9, 2 plus save. He comes with the Angelus Bolt Gun and Carmine Sword, Frag and Crack Grenades. So the Angelus Bolt Gun, we haven't covered this yet. Uh, it's range 12, assault 2. It's not rapid fire. It's assault two. It's always going to be two shots. Range twelve. Strength four. AP minus one, and one point of damage. So it's not a bad weapon. I mean, any weapon with a minus on the AP is, is helpful uh, in eighth edition. Uh, the Inferno pistol covered that. Plasma. In Carmine axe. We'll cover these now. Then. So in Carmine axe gives plus one strength, AP minus two, and D three points of damage. And the Carmine sword. The strength of the user, AP minus three and D three points of damage. Uh, there's no minus to hit with the Uncommon One Axe though. Nope. Uh, power Fist you can give him, times two strength, AP minus three and D three points of damage. But you do have to take minus one to hit with it. And Frank Crack Grenades. You can take a Death Mask. You can replace his Angelus Bolt Gun with an Inferno Pistol or Plasma Pistol. This model may replace his Incarmine Sword with an Incarmine Axe or a power fist. Okay. So the sword costs 13, the axe costs 16. Not really sure why you'd pay out the extra for that. Maybe just the extra bit of strength, but it's not much difference. Uh, and then uh, power fist as well, which I think is 25. So that's your options for him. I think mine comes with the axe, the one that the way I've sculpted mine, the one that I have already made up uh, with the banner. So I think I, I may well still try and take these. They're, they're beautiful models, so iconic for Blood Angels, and I really like the, the sculpting work that's been done on them. Uh, you've got to have that banner, it's really nice. Uh, so this is a chapter banner. For any Blood Angels units within six, do not need to take morale tests. So it's, yeah, fearless, and they reroll wound rolls of one in the fight phase. Okay, so a little bit of a bonus there. Okay, um, ah, jump back assault, yeah, death mask, and then heirs of Ascalon. You can reroll failed to hit rolls for this model. Oh, you can reroll failed to hit rolls for this model if it's within six of Blood Angels Warlord. All oh, right, so he needs to go nearby an HQ, so ideally you wanna Dante, him within six, and then a unit of Sanguinary Guard or something like that. And then he does get to hit, reroll uh, to hit. It's a shame he doesn't grant, he doesn't grant it to the whole unit. Um, but I've got a thing he's not gonna need to. If he's hanging around with Sanguinary Guard, they get it. Heirs of Asclon, they do. So the key then is not to have like a chaplain type unit with these guys, just to have a warlord of some kind. Um, nearby, and then they get the rerolls to hit. So instantly, you're starting to see a pairing up taking place here uh, of Sanguinary Guard, Sanguinary Guard Ancient, and then my Warlord, whoever that is, those three working together and get some nice bonuses. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of thinking Sanguinary Guard, Sanguinary Guard Ancient, and then the Sanguinal. Uh, because he's granting them plus one attack. All of a sudden, uh, a, a, a nice uh, elite units getting plus one attack. You, it's, it's really economical on points to get a free attack. You know, paying out a lot of points for a very elite unit, and all of a sudden they're all getting plus one attack. It's a brilliant bonus to have. Sanguinor uh, helps them out that way. So you do like that combination. Not going to say anything for sure yet, but they're starting to look pretty good. And something else, three and three earlier. Sanguinary Guard. They do, yeah, they get these guys get two wounds. So all of a sudden, they have been improved. They are expensive, but two wounds each for these guys. So not bad. Okay, so 
That's the Sanguinary Guy Ancient. The next one uh, is a Terminator Ancient here. So I think this is the Terminator that carries the banner, the one that the Games Workshop sculpted with the new Blind Just Terminator unit. Um, you can take him, well, you have to take him separate now uh, as an Elite choice. He is power rating of a 6. Terminator Ancient. He's 108 points. It's quite expensive. Uh, movement 5 is a bit slower. Uh, weapon skill, 3 plus, blizzard skill, 3 plus, strength, top is 4, 5 wounds for him. Uh, I, I do like the extra wounds on the characters now. It's cool. Uh, 3 attacks, slash 8, 2 plus save. Sound of a lightning claw. Uh, lightning claws then is uh, it's, uh, strength for the user, AP minus 2, and only 1 point of damage. We roll foul wound rolls for this weapon. Thunder Hammer. Times two strength, AP minus three, three points of damage. Nice. Uh, you must subtract one from your hit rolls though. You can replace your lightning claw with a thunder hammer. I don't think that's going to be listed. Just there. Okay. Or maybe look it up. Should be able to find it just here. Thunder hammer for characters is twenty-five points. So expensive enough and he's only on a base of three attacks so whether it's worth paying that out for him of course makes a very expensive unit that he had 25 points to 108 of course you could get one of these regular uh hqs here like mephiston or something like that for the just a few more points so He's getting expensive if you start adding that kind of war gear. Teleport strike. During deployment, you can set up this unit in the teleportarium chamber instead of placing it on the battlefield at the end of any of your movement phases. This unit can teleport into battle. Set him up so he's more than nine inches away. He has a five plus in button. So the Archangel standard. Friendly blood angels units within six add one to their leadership and you can re-roll foul to hit rolls for them in the fight phase. Okay. So... Okay, so that's the ability that he offers. No, I wouldn't be too fussed on that. I just think it's pretty expensive for what you get. Alright, so next is uh, Death Company. One of the most iconic units for uh, Blood Angels. One of my favourites as well. I uh, do really like the models. So, uh, let's just get a cost for these. Here, yeah, Death Company. So they are 17 points model. Obviously you've got to add your war gear on top of that. Uh, so movement six, weapon skill, ballistic skill three plus, strength for toughness four, just the one wound for these, they haven't been given an increase. Two attacks are standard, leadership and three plus save. Uh, it's five death company marines, you include up to five or up to 10 additional marines, so you can get big units of them. Uh, that's all the weaponry they can take. Got all these covered here. Hand Flamer is uh, range 6, pistol D3, strength 3, uh, 1 point of damage, and auto hits on the target. P pretty um, tame. Not quite helpful in combat, maybe. Uh, the Inferno Pistol there. Uh, Plaza Pistol, Chainsaw, Parax, Power Maul. Power Maul is plus 2 strength, so that puts on strength 6 and AP minus 1. Not bad. Power Sword, Thunder Hammer. Frame crack grenade. Okay. Any model may replace this bolt pistol with a bolt gun, hand flame, inferno pistol, plasma pistol, power axe, power fist, power maul, power sword. Okay. Power sword here is uh, minus three on the AP. Okay. Uh, any model may replace this chainsaw with a power axe, power fist, power maul, power sword. Any model where places chain sword with uh, and bolt pistol with a thunder hammer. Uh, you can take jump packs. That costs uh, jump pack. Death company jump packs. Twenty points each instead of seventeen. It's three points extra times. So it's quite reasonable uh, there to upgrade them. Okay, which I like. I like death companies. Uh, with a, a jump packs. Alright, so these are the ones that come with Black Rage here. So just a reminder of that. 
Black Rage, you get plus one uh, if you charge, plus one attacks, and all of a six every time you take a wound, you ignore it. But similar to Feel No Pain, a little bit worse, it used to be five plus to Feel No Pain, but no matter what the wound is that comes through, they always get that six plus. So it's, uh, that's a slight bonus there. And that is it. Hmm. Yeah, well, Def Company I don't think quite as good as they used to be. There's nothing outstanding here particularly for them. So, not so sure about that. Okay, so, yeah, they're all right, but uh, that's the Def Company covered. So, ah, Lamartis here. I always like the model. I uh, don't have this one, but there's uh, Lamartis, the Guardian of the Lost. So, power seven for him. Lamartis, 129 points, including war gear. So he's expensive enough, uh, but his stat line, I think, has improved. I think he's a better, uh, yeah, he's better than he was in seventh here. He's moving 12, weapon skill two plus, ballistic skill three plus, strength for toughness four, four wounds for him, five attacks, that's a nice hefty amount of attacks for him. Leadership nine, three plus eight. He's armed with Blood Crozius, bolt pistol, fragment crack grenades. Okay, so the Blood Crozius, plus two strength, AP minus two, D3 damage, nice, nasty weapon. He's really good. Um, Fragment crack grenades. Uh, he has black rage as well. Fury unbound. You can reroll failed to charge rolls and failed to hit rolls in the fight phase for friendly death company units within six of the martyrs. Right, it's a brilliant bonus for him. He's the guardian of the lost. All friendly death company units within six can use his leadership, which is nine, so they have their own. He comes with jump back assault and he has his four plus in one save. Yeah, no, he is cool. He is really good. So, yeah, if I was. If I was to ever do pure Def Company Army, I reckon I would definitely try and include the Martes uh, in the list. Okay, so I mean, overall so far, pretty impressed with Blood Angels. They've got access to some decent characters here and some decent units, plus all your regular Space Marine uh, units that you can take as well. So, but uh, like Le Martes, he is good. Uh, and not ridiculous in price either, but some nice benefits if he's uh, put him, you know, say two units of jump packs, uh, Dev Company, and then just stick him in the middle. And then he can grant out all those bonuses, plus his own combat's uh, ability here is pretty good. He's really good. D3 damage, five attacks. I think he's uh, nasty. Uh, and plus two strength as well, so he's fighting at strength six. Not bad, okay. So, next one then is Sanguinary Guard. I love these models, I uh, really do want to continue to use them. Uh, now, they're going to be expensive. They're 22 points each. And just to give you an idea, then Carmine Swords, 13. Uh, so you've got to add that, and you've got to add the Angelus Bolt Gun as well, so it's 9 points. So, uh, you're looking at... Uh, 22... Uh, 35, 44 points each. They're armed with a sword. 44 points each. But, having said all of that, they are two wounds now. Strength for toughness for two wounds, two attacks, leadership eight, and two plus save. Uh, you can, unit contains four, so that's handy. So I could take my unit five that I have, put four of them into this unit, and the spare one is my uh, chapter, Sanguinary Ancient. Um, so I don't have to buy it. They don't come as unit 5 and I have to buy another box to paint one extra model to make that up to unit 5. So you can take a unit 4 and then uh, you can add an additional 6. You can make it up to unit of 10. Uh, so Angelus Bolt Gun, Assault 2, uh, Strength 4, AP minus 1. Pretty good. Inferno Pistols is an option to take. And it might be an option just to give them that ability just to crack vehicles and monstrous creatures and so on. It, oh, 20 points though to take the Inferno Pistol. Very expensive, 20 points. That is expensive to take that. I don't think a regular melter gun's that kind of cost. So, a lot of points that. 
uh, and then we've covered these already in carmine axe and in carmine sword I'll probably take a variety as I have it already just a mixture of those two I do like the swords though uh, I don't take the power fist usually and then uh, any model can take death mask any model can take uh, replaces Angela's bolt gun with an inferno pistol or plasma pistol and then any model may replace in carmine sword with in carmine axe or power fist usually the approach I take is just to um, pay out for the melee weapons and just have them as a dedicated melee unit and then just keep the Angelus bolt guns it's actually pretty cool, two shots each and there's a minus one on the AP so uh, heirs of Azkalon you can reroll failed to hit rolls for models from this unit uh, that were within six of the warlords the idea is to keep the bodyguard the elite unit to go with the warlord so that's doable, I think that's a nice philosophy to have in the army uh, and then they've got death masks and jump pack assault so I really like these, just the glistening gold armour, the wings, so iconic uh, and do plan to continue to have them uh, in this new Lord Angels list. So, you haven't really been struck by any, there's no real poor units here for the Blood Angels and overall I think they've come out pretty good, I mean just to pick out ones that I think are really good, Lamartes is good. Sanguinary Guard and then the Sanguinary Guard Ancient is okay. And I like the other priest, the way he can heal wounds, he's helpful. I think Mephiston's really good, the Sanguinal's good, and the Librarian Dreadnought. Those ones, and Dante as well, obviously, is really good. But there's some great ones here, some great units to choose from uh, for the Blind Angels for sure. Right, Death Company Dreadnought is awesome. In 7th, we'll see how good he is in it. So, Diff Company Dreadnought, he's 128 points. Blood Talons, 65 points. Now, I take it that's for the pair. <laughs> I don't know. Cool, he's, uh, he's going to be expensive here, right? Splendid so Dreadnought, or the Death Company Dreadnought, movement 8. Weapon skill and ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 6, toughness 7, 8 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 7, 3 plus save. He's armed with 2 Furious of Fists, Stormbolt and Meltgun. So the 2 Furious of Fists will cost it's 40 points for a single, 50 points for the pair. Uh, the Furious of Fist. Oh, it is worth taking the pair. It really is, right, so melee, uh, times two strength, so you'd be on strength for 12. Uh, minus three on the AP, so it's good. Three points of damage straight up, so that's nice. And then, model equipped with Fury, so Fist, you can reroll without to hit rolls when attacking with this weapon. Um, so that's really helpful. Freeze to hit rerolls, makes them really reliable. The only downside is three points of damage, because you're going to struggle you are going to struggle to take out a vehicle in one round of combat it used to be it used to be a foregone conclusion vehicles almost guaranteed to be killed but here uh, with the furious of fists even if you'd have to get to destroy a vehicle with 10 11 12 wounds you'd have to get four out of four hits four out of four wounds as well and usually going to be on threes to hit a freeze to wound, so you, it's unlikely you're going to do it. You're going to cause a fair amount of damage. It will half kill the vehicle, but to actually kill it, um, because it's just going to drive away if you don't destroy it. So Furious of Fist is all right. Uh, be good against monstrous creatures, obviously against characters, infantry, against most targets. It's going to do well, but to try and charge and destroy a vehicle, it's going to struggle in one turn. This model may replace its two Furious of Fists with blood. Talons, right? It says blood talons, not a blood talon, two blood talons, it's blood talons. You pay 65 points, you pay 15 points more. But for that, you get times two strength, strength of 12, AP minus three, but it's increased to d6 points of damage. And that potentially is your ability to destroy a vehicle easier in one turn. You could roll badly, but say you get three penetrating hits um, or three wounds caused. It's 3d6 points of damage. I see that as more than likely. More of a chance to get past that. 
uh, 10, 11, 12 wounds. So D6 is nice to him. And it's a little bit of unreliability in there, but if you're rolling multiple D6s, it's going to cause trouble. So I do like the blood talents. I like that configuration. Uh, you may replace the Stormbolt with a heavy flamer. You may replace its melted gun with a heavy flamer. See, that melted gun could help just wound damage a vehicle a little bit just to soften it up and then just add on the wounds when you charge into combat. Right, so Magna Grapple. Magna Grapple the model. If Magna Grapple targets a vehicle, you can add two to its charge roll. It's plus two to your charge range. Okay, so that's helpful enough. He comes with Black Rage. Cool. Uh, it explodes, insatiable. This model may move up to six when consolidating at the end of the fight phase. You could easily forget that, but he, he gets movement six. It's not that amazing. Death Company Dreadnoughts, good. But he is expensive. Death Company Dreadnought, 128 points, plus 65. Look at almost 200 points for him. That is expensive. That is very, very expensive. Okay, next one then is a Furioso uh, Dreadnought here at power 10. Furioso Dreadnought comes in 122. So, just six points difference between them. I'm just looking to see if he's better protected. Uh, no, he's not, I don't think, here. The, st the stat line is exactly the same. The strength and toughness is the same. Same amount of wounds. Same amount of attacks. So, remember you see R13 in 7th uh, edition? There's no bonus translated over to this. I can't see anything. Right, but the weaponry is interesting here. Frag cannon. Range 8, 2d6 shots, that's more reliable. 2d6, maximum of 12, minimum of 2. You've already hit about 6 shots. They're all supposed to hit the target, they're strength 6 and they're AP minus 1. Frag cannon's not bad. And it'll cost 19 points for that. And then we've seen Blood Tans, we've seen the Furioso Fist as well. The one fist isn't bad, it's pretty nasty in combat. And the other cool thing about these uh, arming him for combat and then for shooting is you can fire at one target and charge the other. It's a nice versatility with these, definitely Dreadnoughts are able to do both. Are uh, more versatile now in 8th edition with the ability to charge a di different target than the, ch uh, the target they shot at. Uh, you may replace one Furiosa Fist, so he comes with two Furiosa Fists. Uh, you can replace one of the fists with a Melted gun. Uh, sorry, this model may replace one of its Furioso fists and either its Stormbolt or Melted gun with a frag cannon. Uh, you can replace the fists with blood talents. Model replaces Stormbolt with heavy flamer. Heavy, a Melted gun with heavy flamer. Uh, may replace smoke launchers with Magna Grapple. Alright, so you have to replace your smoke launchers with that. I probably wouldn't bother. I wonder if you have to pay. You do, you have to pay five points for that. Be more reliable on the charge. Um, plus two to your charge roll. But then you lose your smoke launcher ability. So you have to choose for that one. So I'm thinking, you weigh these two up. They are the same. The only difference is black rage for him. So there is some benefit there, just for the extra six points. You're getting black rage, uh, black rage and you're getting insatiable as well. So you do, so I think you pay, you pay a little bit more, six points more, but the, the, the extra you pay, I think, is actually worth it there for that Def Company Dreadnought. So uh, shame they haven't given an extra bonus to you. Just checking again, and there's no bonus for your, your armor and so on for him. Okay, next is the Bell Predator, uh, an iconic uh, Blood Angels vehicle. Let's see what he's like now. Power 8. He's 107 points. Yep. Uh, he is armed with a twin assault cannon. It's a nice 12 shots there, I think, now they get, or 8 shots. Fair amount of shots for him. Let's just look it up. Be able to find it here. 
twin assault cannon. It is 12 shots, strength 6, AP minus 1. So, not bad. The minus one is helpful. With 8th edition, really getting the impression you've got to have weaponry that's got some kind of AP minus on it because units are going to cover, getting plus one to their armor states. All of a sudden, space marines are going to cover, becoming terminators. You need something that knocks that uh, ability down and denies them that cover. Uh, so anything AP minus one or, or better is always very, very helpful. Now, that's what he's equipped with there. The twin assault can is pretty cool. I suppose you could go heavy bolter. Yeah, look at that. You go heavy bolter sponsons. Yeah, an extra three shots each. That's an extra six shots. So now you're looking at 18, <laughs> 18 shots from this vehicle. And there it's strength five and AP minus one as well. So let's look up. Uh, heavy bolter costs. Heavy bolter, 10 points. Nice and cheap. Bow Predator with twin assault cannon, two heavy bolters. It's about 127 points. Very, very cheap indeed. Brilliant. Yeah, uh, weapon skill 6 plus. Um, strength 6, toughness 7, 11 wounds, leadership 8, 3 plus save. So then you've got the Flamestorm cannon. Oh dear, no, there were Flamestorm cannons is not good really the big downside for this is the range flamestorm cannon is range 8 you've got to get so close to use it it's d6 shots it's very unreliable you're all one you're going to get one shot um, strength the, the stats here are good though strength 6 ap minus 2 and 2 points of damage and it automatically hits the target but but the range and the reliability of the amount of shots is a real downside for that Flamestorm cannon, so that's taken a, a, a big knock there. Um, you could go heavy flames on the sponsors there, range 8, heavy D6, strength 5, AP minus 1. Twin assault cannons actually covered here, range 24 for that. No, the. No, the uh, Flamestorm cannon is not here which is interesting and flame inferno angels bolt gun no so i wonder if it's here it is it's 30 points to take that no way nope uh cost for the twin assault cannon is 35 points. I see more value for that. It's only five points more. Your range is vastly superior, 24 inch range, and your, your reliability for your shooting is fantastic. It's always gonna be 12 shots. No, no rolling up, could get a one, oh dear, what a mess. It's just you guarantee 12 shots. They're coming at strength six and AP minus one. So the twin assault cannon on the bow predator, it's brilliant. And then uh, take heavy bolt responses, nice and cheap. Uh, overcharged engines. When this model advances, roll two dice, pick the highest. Explodes and smoke launches. No, do like the bow predator. There's a nice bit of kit that and cheap as well. Uh, you can use that to hose down infantry, light infantry, heavy infantry, infantry in cover, um, and just chuck out loads and loads of shots. Um, you know, and you can't get weapon destroyed results anymore with it. So uh, it's going to be chucking out all those shots, no problem at all. Yep. And then e even if it's knocked down to one or two wounds remaining, you still get fives to hit. If you have so many shots, you're still going to get those hits coming through. So, Bow Predator, uh, I rate that. That's a nice uh, unit, that one. Okay. So, yeah, that helps to bulk out the army. Put one of those in. For a cheap amount of points, pretty good. So do like that. So that's actually the last entry there. I reckon I am going to cover Flesh Terrors because they're so close to Blood Angels. Yeah. So we'll cover Flesh Terrors here. It's just one. It's Gabriel Seth. Um, so we'll cover this HQ choice. There's, uh, there's no special bonuses here for Flesh Terrors. It's just this uh, lead that you can take. So he's power seven. 
Hey, he's listed here with the Blood Angels. It's 135 points. It's quite reasonable in price. It's movement six, weapon skill, ballistic skill two plus, strength for toughness four, six wounds. Okay, he's tough here. Plenty of wounds for him. Four attacks. This nine free up save. Comes with the Blood Reaver. Uh, bolt pistol, fragment crack grenades. You can only take one per army. So the Blood Reaver then is times two strength. So he's on strength eight. It's AP minus one because there is a chainsaw, I guess. Uh, but it is three points of damage. Each time roll is six. Remember, he's attacking with four attacks. Each six to hit, you get an extra hit on the target. The Lord of Slaughter. You can reroll failed hit rolls for friendly flesh terrors within six of him. So there's a nice bonus there. Uh, he does have a four plus in one. Pretty good. And then Whirlwind of Gore. Roll a d6 each time a friendly flesh terrors unit suffers. Uh, it finishes its move in six of Seth. When it consolidates on a six, that unit can immediately fight for a second and final time. Cool, okay, it's a little bonus there as well. So, pretty nice model as well. So that's the Gabriel Seth, he's not bad. Uh, he's not the best HQ there uh, for Blood Angels associated units, but he's not too bad at all. So, that's all the units there, and obviously you've got your regular Space Ring units that are permitted uh, to be taken for Blood Angels as well. Uh, so there it is, uh, Bow Predator, I like that one. The Dreadnoughts are okay, but they are expensive. Sanguine Guard, pretty good, keep a look out for them, I do plan to use them. Uh, the Martes is good, and then we talked about the other HQs and choices as well. But that's the review then uh, in Index Imperium 1 for Blood Angels. Just pick them out just to keep all of their uh, information separate um, from the other uh, chapters uh, that I plan to review, but overall, I think Blood Angels are pretty cool. There's nasty units uh, all round, decent HQs, uh, decent vehicles available for them as well. So, uh, the plan for Blood Angels, I have a nice collection of them, so I plan to revamp the army. Uh, I think the way this army will go, I'll be using units that I already have but haven't been included in the previous list. So you'll see some new units brought in, and I may uh, invest in a few new units that I don't have then bring them into the army as well. If you want to keep track of the development of the new Blood Angels list, then uh, that'll be over on the Plus channel. Keep a look out for an army development video for Blood Angels there. Uh, and then you can also help get involved uh, in that video uh, with forming and shaping the new Blood Angels list. I get the impression they'll do pretty well in 8th edition. Can't see any problems with them. Uh, they seem pretty solid all round. As I mentioned earlier, I've got my book from gamingfigures.com. You can check them out for discount. Warhammer 40,000 and then a load of other gaming systems uh, available from them as well. But there it is, leave your comments and feedback about Blood Angels, uh, combinations that you think will work well, if you've had any experience with them in 8th already and if they've done well or they haven't then uh, leave that in the comments section as well. But there it is, that's the review here for Blood Angels from the Index Imperium 1. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in next time.